So here we are in the third turn, uh, or third war, first round. Austria has taken their turn. And we're seeing, maybe because of the choices that I made to maintain the rules as they were, as I've been playing them as opposed to how they're written, what a hard uh, row they have to hoe, as it were. Um, the English holdings here, two army and a fortification, plus a German state, makes it very, very difficult for even Austria, who's fairly powerful, to come up with a good attack. So Austria built an army. They also took a chip. They bought an improved agriculture chip. They helped pay for that with the sugar plantations. In the off chance that someone's able to attack them in uh, the Caribbean, they want to make sure that they get their full cash for that. They're going to need a lot of money this turn, I think. Um, but basically, they're trying to build up a big enough force to even attack the Reds. Uh, and the improved agriculture, well, that's going to be able to make up for some of the population they're expending on the war effort so that they don't lose as much ground in terms of, uh, I guess, total victory points at the end. I'm not sure if it's going to matter. What is it? What does it matter how much population you have at the end? I mean, it feels like I should. It, I don't think it's actually going to matter. Um, you get more cash. So I'm not going to buy that. Instead, I'll just buy another army. Well, let me take my four bucks back. That I paid for that. And I'll just build another army. And I want to get enough force together to knock the Brits completely out of Germany. And if I happen to take the Dutch out at the same time, hey, no big deal. And the English do pretty much the same thing. Their feeling is, I just have to hold on to what I have here. Um, got some unrest, but I think people are going to go higher than that trying to attack me. So, built a fortification over in Central Europe and an extra infantry over... In Germany. That actually makes Germany more defended, or Central Europe more defended than Germany, for whatever reason. Uh, that's the position that they got themselves into. I don't know. One of the things is I want to have forces here so I can maybe knock the Dutch out of place, although I don't think they're really a challenge. Oh well, we'll see. Spain on their turn built up their army in Central Europe again, that big anti-English coalition happening. But the French said, yeah, I can't fight the English, and maybe I'm supposed to fight the Austrians. Maybe that's what somebody put. That's cool. I'll move a couple navies there. But I also want to improve my own position. I'm so far behind. The only way I'm going to have a chance is to gain points here. So they put themselves, uh, they grabbed a population counter down in Africa. And they're going to get points for that. And now, at this point, some people like Austria are thinking, you know, I ought to be feathering my own nest, too. There's these South American slaves. I really shouldn't just be ignoring everything to take Britain down. Because for me to win, I have to have more points than Britain. And if I just fight to take them down, eh, somebody else may pass me who's trying to do better. We've got people like Russia who haven't gone yet and are going very shortly. Okay, so for the Russian turn... They grab the uh, African minor country there just to make sure that the French don't exceed the number of territories that they hold in Africa. If they did, Russia would lose a point for that. And they really can't afford that. And then they also use their militia to increase the number of pieces they have in the Baltic. So they built two new armies. They're going to trigger off their, spot, uh, their slaves too. They don't think they're going to get more than this. And that'll give them two more bucks for the upcoming wars. They might have less if the French attack onward. For the Prussians, um, they figured they have plenty of money. So they fired off their two East India companies, grabbed the piles of cash there. They're not going to expand their holdings in East Indies or India. They actually moved the navies out of there into North America and Africa and triggered off the South American slaves over in South America, getting themselves 
a tie over there for second place, which is worth three points. And this is kind of safe because both uh, France and the Netherlands are on their side in this fight. So they're less likely to lose anything. They're not in a commanding position victory point-wise, so people aren't going to come sniping them. Of course, somebody might go there to grab an easy victory point. But between movement and combat, it would take two actions. It may not be that easy to pick up. They also threw a navy over here into North America uh, in order to perhaps expand into some of the cheaper... There's a couple of cheaper counters there. They don't really need it for the colonization option, but they do need it if they wanted to attack, and they had the choice of one or the, you know, they, they had two navies to move, so that seemed like not a terrible thing, because there they are facing the Austrians, who could attack them, so they may need to get some troops into play there. All right, last but not least on this round is the Dutch. And the Dutch are also hunting cheap victory points. They grabbed a colonization option in India. And other people should be considering this. You know, the Brits should have been looking for points there instead of maybe defending everything as massively as they could, but they have a hard decision here because if they don't defend everything massively, they're probably going to lose some heavy victory points that they have in Europe. Um, and they may still lose things that they have outside of Europe because they have enemies who, like Russia, could interfere in the uh, colonial stuff. There's still one sort of freebie left, a colonization option in North America. Uh, the Dutch can't take both of those, so instead of that they moved a navy and an army into the East Indies, and they're going to try to capture uh, this, but that's not likely to do them any good. They don't really want to go there. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I rolled the dice for it. They have to worry about Austrians. If instead they sailed here, they'd be able to support and maybe do something in Austria or uh, in North America, which will help them against the Austrians. There really aren't a lot of opportunities available for them uh, that they can easily pick up. The East Indies look cheap and they could get there, but we got three units for the Prussians and two for the French, that means they're going to place third and that's worth no points. So that one point, popular, uh, one point minor country is not worth it for them. All right, well, we're going to go into round two. And I moved things here. I have a real hard time moving forward on this one. I don't know why. It's sort of this lethargy that's setting in about this game. Uh, there was a lot of excitement early on. Maybe finding that I did the rules so wrong in so many ways. Uh, even though I don't think it's damaged it as a game, has kind of made me feel kind of blah about it. It may also be <laughs> that there's just not enough flavor to the game. It ends up as a Euro. It really does. So here in uh, round two, the Austrians take their start off turn. They grab Native American population colonized up here. That solidifies their hold so that the French have a harder time taking a territory or taking control by just grabbing one of these counters. However, it, they also wanted to move for the East Indies counter. They tried to move a ship there, it sunk on the way, so they moved an extra army into Germany, looking again at trying to press against the Brits. Uh, you know, kind of not able to make up their mind what they're doing, but seeing the defeat at reaching here caused them to pull out of it, basically. Feeling like they're not liable to lose much in Europe, the Brits um, are expanding and they tried to move into the East Indies as well. The reason is Prussia and France, well Prussia particularly, is not opposed to them. So they moved, a, built a fleet and moved it there, uh, but then they built an army and it didn't make it. It's stuck over in Britain. Spain felt like they had to take some risks. So they built an army in Central Europe, attacked at even odds, rolled, lost, re-rolled using their reserves, lost again. But 
I actually noticed a 7 this time and remembered what the effect is. So Britain also lost a unit. Uh, both sides gained uh, an unrest and we move on. The French feel like they're, uh, they had to take their effects on the Austrians. They played their press gangs, put another fleet in here, fought the Austrian fleet. They also got a 7 but one uh, after playing their reserves and the Austrians were then being attacked at even and they lost the first die roll they played their reserves then they lost the second die roll as well so the French ended up gaining a space there Russians did two attacks in the Baltic against the Brits also triggered off their Levant company to give them some more cash they have successfully knocked the Brits down so that they're not tied with them, but they want to knock the Brits completely out. That's where their forces are devoted, and everybody's pretty much agreed we're going to attack the Brits already this turn. Uh, that leaves us with the Prussians and the Dutch. The Prussians failed in an attack on the East Indies. They started setting themselves up against the Austrians. The Dutch actually, uh, well, they triggered their gold. What else did they do? They launched an attack. Trying to think if they did another action. They've got another action coming. They've got these trained natives. You can fire those off and build them there now that they own this. They couldn't do that before the attack. Uh, I think they're going to do another attack against the Austrians. And now they're a plus two, plus three essentially. And they get an eight to an eight. That's a tie. That's not terribly good for anybody. Uh, well, it's good enough for the Austrians. So the Dutch end up taking another unrest. And we're seeing things kind of collapsing as we move into round three. So here in the uh, third round, the Austrians opened things up, put one last piece into Germany, made an attack. It was only a plus two. It wasn't enough. Perhaps because of the die roll luck. Uh, difference, but had the roll been the same, like my mistaking the combat system, had the die rolls been the same, they would have had a zero difference, and the Brits would have had a three point difference, so they still would have, uh, the Austrians still would have lost, they lost the unit, they lost, got an extra piece of unrest, it's going to be really hard taking the Brits down, uh, and the Austrians have been losing some of their advantages, it looks like North America is going to get taken away from them completely. So, it may be really hard to catch the Brits. Brits managed to grab a holding in the East Indies. They also built, using their militia, two more armies. They put in Germany and Central Europe. They're actually abandoning the Baltic to Russia, which might be a little dangerous. Uh, Russia's got a good scoring position, and nobody's really going after them. Spain takes its turn. Um, they're, uh... They, built an extra army out of their population and ended up in an even attack on the Brits. Had a victory though and have managed to impose themselves somewhat into Central Europe. Their goal here is in the remaining rounds to try to get Britain down below. The danger of course though is they don't have a lot of money now. They have the banking so that's kind of an advantage and they have the Levant company. Which I think they'll trigger off to get a couple bucks. But they don't have really the staying power to make these attacks without incurring some uh, significant amounts of unrest. And on top of that, they're low odds attacks, so it's kind of a really risky move for them. But they're so far back, their only real way of advancing is to both knock the British down and gain a lot. They probably can't do both. France is doing their part. They knock the Austrians out. They're going for full dominance of North America. The big bonus here is depriving other people of points at this point. There's not a lot else that they see that they can do. Interfering in Europe isn't likely to help much. The Russians continue their attacks in the Baltic. Now they had three units there. They lost one in the first fight, defeated by the British or their allies. And I tried looking this up, but you know, it's so hard to find something in the rules. I went to look to see if Sweden and Denmark count. I couldn't find that they don't. Uh, the, the alliance chits if there's no army there um, so I played that they do you know if rules aren't a good reference material the hell with it <laughs> you figure out how you want to play 
Um, and then the Russians uh, succeeded in their second one, but they got their nasty seven roll and ended up losing a unit. So they picked up two unrest for their attacks and are probably hurting themselves at least as much as they're hurting Britain with all this. But it's part of this agreement to take Britain down. On to And Prussia moved its influence into Africa to start attacking the Russians, and the Dutch actually slid into the Mediterranean with the same kind of goal. Start trying to undermine the Russians because everyone else is taking hits who's in that lead position. We'll see where it all goes. That drops us to the fourth in the end of this video. And we'll move forward probably with the wrap-up after the next couple rounds.